What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick video, I'll be showing you how you can back up your system using a fantastic little tool called Duplicity. In a previous video, you've probably seen me cover Duplicity, showing you how you can back up your system to cloud services like Google Drive, OneDrive, Dropbox, etc. This is a powerful little tool that offers encryption and things like that, but the only issue is, is it's just a little bit too finicky to use in a proper production environment, keeping actual important things backed up. I know this firsthand, as I've had backups going for a long time, it just happens that backups here are a little bit slow, sometimes just randomly break, and I've had to re-upload my entire system once or twice, as for some reason or another, the backups just stopped functioning properly. However, you can still find guides for this, should you be interested in setting it up, but there's another piece of software called Duplicis-C, very similar name, a little bit confusing, that also allows you to upload to all of these different platforms, except speed is definitely far improved when it comes to encryption, uploading, etc. And of course, I've found personally that this is a little bit more reliable. The process of setting this up is very similar to the previous one. However, the only difference is that while this program is technically free, only the command line version is completely free. There is a personal license, however, to use the GUI. But before you click off, I will be giving away five year-long access keys to Duplicity. And if you're looking to give it a try, it's free for, I think, probably 30 days. And beyond that, you could very easily walk away with one of the five keys. Anyways, this video wasn't sponsored or anything. I literally reached out and asked for keys to give away. They gave me, and now I'm creating a video, albeit a couple of weeks late. So you'll find information on joining the giveaway in the description down below. So how do we download, install, and get our backups set up with Duplicity? Well, it's actually super simple. In the description down below, you'll find a link to duplicity.com. Simply download this. You'll be taken to a downloads page. Choose your Windows, Mac, or Linux install, and open it up when it finishes is downloading. There also is an old GUI version and a command line version. The command line version is completely free and open source. And if you're comfortable playing around with the command line, this is a superb, powerful tool for backups, speed, etc. Anyways, once the download is complete, simply open it up and we'll click through the installer. That's it. When it opens up, your browser will open to 127001 colon 3875. And this is the dashboard to interact with the program. It runs in the background as a service, so if you ever need to get back to this dashboard, either double-click the icon to get the link, or head across to this link in your browser. Inside of here, it will look very bare and very confusing, but the setup is rather simple. First of all, on the Storage tab, we'll be adding a new directory that we'll be uploading or copying to. It can either be a local backup directory, Google Drive, or one of these options here. I'll be using OneDrive in my case, as I have a terabyte of storage there that I'll be using for backup. In order to get access, they'll usually have steps here that you simply need to follow along with. And in this case, I'll be getting a token file and directory. On this page here, it'll tell me to download my credentials. And when we click this, it'll download a file from OneDrive that we then need to place in a folder and tell Duplicity where it is. This of course can be downloaded in the future should you ever need to restore from your backup on a completely new system. So I'll place this in a safe place. I'll make a folder called Oh, let's see, backup, and in here I'll drop it in. Once you've placed it in a folder, make note of where you are, and in the web configuration, click the file icon next to token file, then navigate into wherever you have it saved. I'll select it and select. Now for the directory, when we click this, it'll connect to our OneDrive and it'll list out all of the folders there. So if you haven't already, open up OneDrive and create yourself a new directory where we'll be backing things up to. I'll create a new folder, simply called Backup. If you make a new folder, cancel and check again to refresh and I'll select Backup, select Continue. And now it'll check to see if there's an existing backup here. If there's not, we can set one up. We'll give it a name such as, let's say, OneDrive backup, although there can't be spaces, password, I'll set a nice secure password here for encryption, and we can choose to customize the rest of these options if you'd so wish. I'll be leaving everything as is, so it's just encrypted with a simple password. Then, when we add it, it should now be created as one backup, and if we open it up, you'll see a couple of folders in here, like chunks, fossils, snapshots, etc. This is a rolling backup that we've now created, so incrementally, as we add and remove files, we'll still have access to them over the coming weeks, months, etc. As long as it has this little 
lock, it says password encrypted, and that's exactly what we want. Now we can head across to the backup tab, and in here, you'll see at the very top, a personal trial or anything else. You can click this to bring up the license activation, should you wish to activate it in the future. In the top right, you'll have a plus button that you can use to add a new folder to your backup scheme. So I'll look for a directory and I'll back up my A drive, then projects, as this is where I keep most of my documents. Then we can choose a destination. I'll be choosing OneDrive backup and finally a backup ID. I'll just call it OneDrive projects, for example. I'll save it and now we can adjust it even further. If we click options on the far right, we can set a number of threads here that it can compress and upload with, as well as some more advanced options. And of course, we can include extra files or exclude files. It'll open up whatever directory you have selected. And let's say I don't want to include my AI training folder. I can select it, exclude, and there we go. We can even add to add our own custom syntax. And there's a user guide linked here if you'd like to exclude all files of one specific type, etc. Anyways, when we're happy, we can save. And now we can hit play in the bottom left, which will start the backup immediately. It'll start by index indexing your files, and then compressing, encrypting, and uploading. There we go. Now, when I was using T previously, the upload speed was around three or four megabytes. Here, it's around 30, which is a huge improvement. Obviously, my internet's a bit slow at the moment, and of course, depending on where you are, distance-wise and connection-wise, compared to whatever server you're connecting to, whether it's OneDrive, an S3 container, etc., your speed will obviously be different, and most of the time it's the cloud platform limiting your upload speed. That's it. We've now successfully set up a backup. If we have a look at OneDrive, you should see that files start populating in here. So for example, we now have a gig and a half in chunks, and this is where all of our files are broken up, encrypted, and stored. So even if someone were to get access to your OneDrive, for example, they wouldn't be able to do anything with any of these until they guess your backup password, which is great. You can even use AES encryption if you want to go even further. Now that we've set up a backup and it's busy running, in order to get this to run automatically on the schedule tab, you'll get a pop-up about setting up new scheduled jobs. I'll name this say auto backup and we'll get it to run every, let's see, every 8 p.m., every day, days of the week, and set a maximum runtime if for some reason you'd like to pause and start it the next day. I'll save it. And in the far top right, we can add new jobs to this, for which I'll be adding a backup job to back up my projects folder to OneDrive, and we can add extra options here. But for now, I'll just be hitting save and changing the number of threads for faster compressing, uploading, etc. Now, every 24 hours at 8 p.m., this backup system will be run. In order to help save space on the cloud, we can also set up a prune event, which will run through snapshots and delete snapshots older than 1,800 days, keep one snapshot every seven days if older than 30 days, every day if older than seven, and we can set some extra options here. The default settings seem pretty good, so I'll be adding them here. You can also use copy to copy from one source to another. Say when you back up to OneDrive, you can create a copy of all of your backed up files to Google Drive or something like that, etc. Finally, the check just verifies that everything's set up, working, and everything's still good, which is a good option to add as well if you'd like some extra peace of mind. You'll even get a countdown to the next run as it's a couple of hours to eight. You can see it'll be run in two and a half hours. Sweet. We can even set it to send an email after completion by setting an SMTP server, username, password, addresses, etc. And whenever this backup runs, it'll notify us via email. Now, the reason that this is here is that you can install duplicity on something like a Linux server, get it to backup files automatically, and email you when it's done. This is great. Then on the restore tab, we can obviously restore files from backups, but I don't think I'll be able to do anything just yet as I still have my first backup running. Yeah, on the settings tab, we can adjust where our page opens up, which is especially useful, once again, if you run this on some kind of a server, temporary directory, logs directory, default passwords, an administration password, if you'd like to lock this dashboard here, expiry, and of course, choose whether we want the latest or stable release for the command line. The final tab, forum takes you across to the duplicity forum where they have extra help and of course if you have any questions you can ask them here the dashboard tab has a nice little block of information telling you your storage size over time new revisions and of course activity at the very bottom now of course this may seem super overwhelming especially for someone who's used something like duplicity before but having the much increased extra speed and extra liability which i've experienced so far it's absolutely worth 
the small amount of money that you pay for this, especially as other backup software is much more expensive and does a lot less. The main thing that I look for is reliability, uptime, and of course the ability to upload to personal cloud storage, such as Google Drive, OneDrive, etc., as that's what's cheapest for me. Of course, you could set up something like Backblaze and get this to sync with that as well, but for me, this is good enough. Now, obviously I'm backing up just one folder here, but we can easily set up more backups in the future. Choose a different folder, such as maybe, let's back up my users, username, documents folder, for example. I can select it, enter in a name here, like OD documents. And when I choose save, it'll simply add it to our OneDrive backup as well. We can then run this through and have peace of mind for this folder as well. I don't think it'll run until my first backup here is done, so I'll pause the video and return when it is. Of course, whenever you add something new, make sure you add it to your schedule so it's automatically backed up as well. There we go. Sweet. Well, never mind. There we go. I'm now backing up both of these folders at once using around 50, 55 ish megabytes a second, which is huge compared to Duplessis team. And there we go. The backups are now done. So if we head across to restore, for example, then choose our backup destination, which was OneDrive, choose what we want to restore. I'll choose my documents, choose a revision after it loads. And from here, we'll be able to choose the daily, monthly, whatever backups that we have set up. It'll probably be one every seven days, three for a month and once monthly for a whole year or whatever is set up in your settings based on your prune. After you choose something, it'll start loading a list of all of the files and there we go. Now we're able to explore our files. So in here, I've got all of my documents, obviously, as that's what I backed up here. Let's say I want to bring back my Call of Duty configuration. I'll simply choose the folder, choose where to restore it to. For example, let's go H drive temp, probably good enough. But of course you could restore back to your original folder, etc. and restored. Okay, so now that we've chosen a folder, we'll restore and it'll grab everything downloaded from the cloud and drop it into the folder here. So here's the folder and I'm pretty sure it'll be done in a few seconds as it's a rather small folder. It tells us what files were successfully restored, if anything went wrong, a log, etc. So exploring the folder, Call of Duty plays, everything's here as I left it. Sweet, from here we can choose different folders, restore the entire thing if we want by choosing the entire revision, choose a different version, etc. It's very in-depth and there's tons that you can do with the software. I've merely just scratched the surface here. And as soon as I'm done with recording this video, I'll be setting up the rest of my backups, which will probably be more than a few gigabytes. But anyways, would I recommend it? Yeah, it seems pretty good for the month or two that I've been using it. I've suffered one really catastrophic hard drive failure, so it's come in clutch there, where I couldn't say that T, which I actually have running at the same time and is just still broken for me, would have had my back in the same way. Now, of course, there are many different backup and restoring solutions. I personally go for ones that are open source and have a bit more of a community around them, as I do like supporting smaller developers, etc. And of course, I like knowing exactly what's going on with my backups. This is just a front end for the command line tool that's completely free for everyone to use. So if you really don't want to pay for a front end GUI, you could quite literally check out the open source command line tool and set up everything there to your heart's desire. And of course, if you use something like a remote server, you'll probably be using the completely free CLI version anyways. So once again, if you'd like to get one of the five keys that I'll be giving away, do check the description down below. And in probably a week or two, I'll be closing the giveaway. So make sure you check it out really soon. But anyways, that's really about it for this quick guide. Hopefully you found it useful. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.